My journey began on a small island in the St. Vincent Grenadines called Canawan. In that island, our people are very religious and going to church, praying um, several times, a very important aspect of our lives. Now, when I was about seven years, I remember as little children, my brother, my brothers and sister, we used to play um, funerals. And if an animal die or something die, they will call me and they will say, um, Vibert, you will be the priest. And you will sing and you will read and so on. And that, that, that is where it began. Until one day I was at church and I saw the priest elevating both the chalice and the horse. And I said to my, grana, my grandmother, Aunt Rose, I want to be like that. And she rang my ears and told me to sit down and be quiet. As the priest elevated again, I said, I want to be like that. But the true call came to me when Bishop Dixon laid his hands on me for confirmation. I heard something saying within me, I want you to serve me as a priest. As well as hearing this audible voice speaking deep within. And I was, I was a very unruly child growing up. And when I say unruly, if someone tells me to do something and I don't want to do it, I certainly not going to do it, even under punishment. I was very stubborn. But there was also something obedient in me when my parents um, tried to direct me, I tried to learn and so. In Canawan, we had very little sport activities, but what in comparison with other places. But what we had, swimming, that was a real hobby. Rowing boats, racing. We, for instance, we had things like horse, donkey racing, when we had horse, that was part of it. Um, boat rowing, racing, running. We did all these things. We also, as a, as a, as a young boy, engage in um, activities that young boys will like to. So do not think that as I was growing up, I did not um, look at girls. I was very mischievous. I, love to tease the girls, and so on. But my, my, my life in Canawan, growing up, when I became a teenager and beyond, I was very much engaged in the social life. I was engaged in helping people to organize themselves and to um, organize parties, um, something we have called Saraka, where we offer thanksgiving to God for the blessings he gave us. Um, from the produce of the land, which I myself did, I cultivated like everybody else. Um, I, I, I move around um, to, from place to place in the island, talking water on our heads because water was a very scarce resource. The place was hot, the ground was dry. A very happy one for me. I seem to be a person who um, walk along good uh, with the teachers. Um, involving my studies and so on. In fact, um, I was considered one of the intelligent um, persons not to draw attention to myself. Um, and many, I skipped several classes. Um, persons like uh, John Sandy and Bernadette Sandy and Bettina um, were among, um, Louis de Rocher were among the teachers um, that um, pushed me to study um, while I was in secondary school, while I was in primary school. However, um, because of our own condition, I was not thinking in any way of going to a secondary school. In Canawan, we think of um, two things. First of all, uh, at least three. You go to school, you learn a trade. Then you go to the sea. You work for your money. You return home, you build a house. You're married, you have children, um, and so on, and then you die after. That is a life. Until a gentleman came to Canawan, an uncle of mine named Matthias Lewis, and he said, Vibert, I want you to go to secondary school. And 
I didn't want to know where he wanted to. I wanted to just get on a ship and so on, be a soldier, things like that I thought about. And eventually I accepted after um, pursuing me several times. When I got to se um, secondary school, I was really too old for Farm 1. I went into Farm 2, and let me tell you this, it was very difficult for me. A boy who was considered bright at home, making that cultural adjustment in St. Vincent was difficult. However, I also had some excellent teachers like Gillis Francis, and um, Sister Pat, Sister Maureen, Sister Philomena, Sister Pay. We had a number of them, um, Karma Balcom and Mrs. Bess, um, Jordi now, and a number of these teachers who stuck with me and said, Vibert, Vibert, you can do it. Vibert, you can do it. And remain with me, even helping me to write properly and to read properly. Evening after evening, they stay with me until I was able to do my CXC and GC and so on, continue my studies. Even to teach in the school there, um, the secondary school, which is called St. Joseph Convent now, but it was Marocco Secondary in Mesopotamia, where especially I really grew in faith. They wanted me to stay there to teach, and I said, no, I'll go home to my island, Canawan. But there in Mesopotamia, I met persons like George Bailey, a number of them, Eileen, so many of them teaching me. Father Samson, Russ Samson, um, Clement Paul was there too, Father Paul, and a number of others who really helped me to grow in faith and to continue to hold on to the dream that I had. Now, I try my best to get away from this priesthood thing. I got girlfriends, I try to stay away from church, all kind of different things happen to me. But every time I do that, I know I was missing something. That there was something, voice saying to me, you must go. Until I applied to Bishop Dixon, and he said, well, you must work, have experience in life, and um, then come back. So two, three, three, almost four years, I went back, and I said, in the meantime, I was still testing myself to see if I really wanted this. And I like girls and girls like me, but that was a great challenge for me. And um, I wouldn't say that everything was all right in relationship arena. I wouldn't say that everything was perfect and good. Um, I had my moments of um, failures and my moments of strength. But yet, I know that God was pulling me. John Vianney and the Ugandan Matters Seminary in Trinidad. Um, it's up Mount St. Benedict, a lovely view. And there is where I learned to be a real human being in the world. Not that I didn't know, I, I wasn't taught things at home. And school, all those were valuable, their foundation for me, how to love and serve. But in this seminary, I learned how to integrate with different people with different race, Indians, whites, black, whatever they are, um, pe indigenous people. So many different people come to the seminary to work. There wasn't any different, any isolation, no discrimination. Everyone um, work in joy. And we, we were engaging many different social activities. We are involved in parish life um, in the seminary. Um, we go to from the seminary, go to villages, and I'm um, involved in the church life there. Um, we are engaged in schools. For instance, I taught in a few schools, um, an orphanage which I was engaging, a number of other activities. We are involved in fundraising, like for instance, singing. Sister Susan Gopal, who was here, she was very much part of that. But I had some excellent teachers. One, Dr. Johnson, and I praise him for the input he has given, especially in the biblical world. And he drew me into something that really captured me. And I think that is one of those motivating power. Then we met Father Charles, who had a very, a very strong faith and trust. This man, I think, is one of the, um, the few that I will say represent for me ideal priests that touched my life. He was a holy man. 
and um, Sister Katrina and a number of other Sister Patty. All of these people help in molding and helping forming me to be the person that I am. So, so far, within the seminary, I studied there. I also studied at the University of the West Indies. And all of these helped me to form my mind and my heart so that I'll be prepared in so many things in the humanities that I can reach out in any aspect of life and help persons um, in their particular um, difficulties. Well, before the priesthood, we had the Akanit, and uh, the Akanit ran for almost three years. And during those times, I had um, the kind of preparation I needed for service. It was really a happy moment for me. And uh, when I was ordained as a priest, I think apart from um, my conversion, my I'm coming to know the Lord, especially through the laying on of hands in confirmation. I think the ordination experience was one of the most powerful and profound experience. There I, ex I, I felt the power of God, power of God working in me, filling me. And with that kind of experience, I moved into service, especially under the direction of Bishop Dixon and Father Paul. Father Paul was a person, um, he's a person with vast experience, he knew the place and, and I also had Michael Hunt who really, among the other persons who really helped to show me around and to meet people and to get um, to know people's experience and life and to be able to, um, to share with them. The greatest joy I had um, being ordained of pr a priest is to know Jesus personally. That might be a surprise to you. Didn't I not know Jesus before? Yes, but touching the elements of bread and wine and making it become the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, offering the forgiveness of sins, I don't think there could be anything greater than doing this, these things. I am humble that what I received as a child that he had called me to be, that now I am there engaged. What shocked me, for instance, is that I discovered that priests and people are human and that they are failure. And I have to live, live my life knowing that there is failure but knowing that there is courage and there is a desire to serve God in honesty. What, what I do know is that the church, the Catholic church that I, I belong to is a church that says we are called to grow in holiness. It may mean working with our weakness, working with our sinfulness, but working knowing that God is with us and that is what I did. God is with me, working with me, and um, allowing his grace to walk through me in the lives of people, bringing healing, freeing them from evil, and proclaiming a word that will touch their heart, bringing Jesus alive to them. I do not know what lies ahead beyond these 20 years. But I know one thing for sure, a vision of what God wants. That vision was enshrined in the call of Abraham to plunge into the darkness. That vision was seen in the call of Moses to lead the people Israel and to tell them about the building of God's temple. That vision is seen in the prophet and that vision seen in the prophet who proclaimed the oneness of God and the promise of God to be among us. That oneness is revealed in Jesus. That is what I see. What I see for the future is envisioning envision in, in a new heaven, a heaven where um, people can place their energy, people can place their strength towards 
knowing and understanding the love of Christ Jesus. My vision is to see a church growing in depth, growing wide, growing in love for the Lord. I want to be practical with this. I will do this even more so in the preaching of the word. And in the preaching of the word is to bring a life, allow Jesus to come alive again in the life of our people. Not only Catholics, but wherever they are, they must be drawn to that word to experience his divine presence. Secondly, we must be practical. God wants us to expand, to spread his word. And recently, just a month now, we have been in St. George. And uh, we started in a little community there in a plantation, the Brighton Plantation. And we are gathering people there. Why? Because we have hope that God wants his word to spread in that area too and other areas. And our hope and my dream is that we'll create a community there where people can come to adore the Lord, to praise him, to feel at home, to want to be there because they know that they will experience Jesus. Corpus Christi means body of Christ. It is a name of the, the, the community we are forming. I humble myself in God's presence. And I humble myself because where I am today, I could not have been without the prayers, the support, the dedication of people. So many people from my island, Canaan, from Mesopotamia, from Trinidad, from St. Lucia, where I have relatives in the States, right here in Barbados, right here especially, people welcome me. They held me as their own, the people in Black Rock especially. Some people in the parish of Our Lady of Sorrows where I work. And where I am now at Corpus Christi, people at St. Patrick's, as I said, embrace me and I cannot help but to thank them. The young people also supported me. They walked with me. And so all the prayers, and I, I cannot not say thanks to Bishop Dixon and Bishop Gold and Bishop Jason who are presently really had to integrate me into the movement of the church that is happening now. And I want to thank God. I don't want to name anyone in particular, but I want to thank my fellow priests who have been with me. And I get a little joy from a little boy called Nathan Chandler. Nathan is, he calls me granddaddy and he shows his love. And I think just looking at him and thinking of the future of the priesthood, I say, Lord, let me work steadily. Let me work steadily that others will seek an example so that they too may come to serve you, not only in the priesthood, but the religious life, brothers and sisters, and lay apostolate, um, the Living Waters community, to serve and to build this church and to make this church great, to make the Lord's name great, for, to be glorified forever and ever. Amen.